Welcome. This is Melinda Barlow, ZZT, Certified Zen Tangle Teacher. And today's lesson is Rick's Paradox. And you can see some examples here that I've done. One in the round and just some few tangles. It looks much, 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 much harder than it is. I am going to use a little bijou tile to do my Rick's Paradox on. And because I'm going to show you several different ways to do it in a triangle, in a square, and just to create different patterns that you can create. So we're just going to start with our pen. Now I'm using a Micron 01 by Secura. And I am just going to draw a square on my little bijou tile. And I am going to divide it into fourths. And then I'm going to make triangles. So now I have it divided. You don't have to do that with um, Rick's Paradox, but we're going to work in a triangle shape So when we first start out. So that's why I've done this. And we're just going, we've got our triangle shape. And now I'm going to start right here on this corner. And I'm going to take, and I'm going to work in this particular triangle right here to begin with. And I'm going to draw my line. And it's slightly going to get wider as I go up. And then I'm going to rotate my tile because I find that that's much easier for beginners. And then I'm going to come, this was my line. Then I'm going to come right here and draw at an angle. Rotate my tile, start here, and come up. So now I have an, kind of another triangle within this triangle. Rotate, and I'm going to keep doing the same thing. Rotating my tile and drawing my line. I remember when I first did Rick's Paradox, I struggled it with it for hours trying to figure out how to do it. And then it hit me that I needed to turn my tile. See the last little bit, I did not turn my tile. So you see I did straight lines, but I got a curve line as I was doing it. So now I'm going to come down here and I'm going to do the same thing, but this time instead of going clockwise, I am going to go counterclockwise. Drew my line. This time I'm going to do it without rotating my tile. And you see what happened? I get this little kind of a, I don't know what kind of shape that is. Now I'm going to do it on this one. This time I'm going to do clockwise. And you can see I, I've gotten to the point where I can do it without rotating my tile. And now I'm going to go counterclockwise. The closer together you make your lines, the better your Rick's Paradox will really be. If you have your lines really far apart, you're not going to get that look. And you can see how I'm getting. I'm just rotating again. And I know which direction to go because see this little fan, half of that fan shape? I know that this time I need to go clockwise.
that one right there was a little wide. And when they're wide, they just don't turn out the same. Now I've got a curve line kind of looking here, the fan. So this time I'm going to go the opposite direction. And you can see how these straight lines, doing straight lines every time, and you get a curve. One last section to fill. And there we have Rick's Paradox done with the triangular shape. Now, if you want to shade this one, which I always say you need to shade, you can just shade in various places. We can put our graphite down in the points. And that's a good way to shade it. Now, we're going to do Rick's Paradox in a square shape instead of a triangular shape. So again, I'm going to take a um, bijou tile and I'm going to draw a large square in the center and I'm going to divide it off. But we're going to leave it just like that, just in four triangles. I mean, four squares. And we're going to do the same thing that we did in the triangle. We're going to start. We're going to just come out just slightly. So you have a little square inside of it that's kind of off kilter. And we're just going to keep doing that. Those lines need to be close together. And you see I am not rotating my tile. I've gotten to the point where I don't need to rotate. Sometimes I like to rotate just because I can get a finer line. When I draw one direction, I sometimes get a little wobbly line. And with rotating my tile, I get a straighter line because I'm able to bank my, draw my pen towards me instead of pushing my pen away. And you can see my little shape appearing. Just making that square right inside of that other one just off a tiny bit. Those lines just slightly go to one side or angle off. And it just gets smaller and smaller. So we're done. Now you can see that I have four portions of that fan. Now there are two things that I can do to make that fan. Um, it will. It can look different. Now, if we do our square always going the same direction, would end up with one design. But if we change it so that they go in opposite directions. So I started here and I started at the corner and I fanned up and then I worked my ray around this direction. Now this time, I'm going to start in this inside corner and come up. And my square is going to go in the opposite direction.
So now I want, and I look again at this shape. So, so I, which way do I need to go? If I'm going to do this square, I can see that this fan shape. So that means I start here in this corner and go out. I'm going to turn it so that I'm drawing my pen. I make thinner lines when I do that also. Not thinner lines, but thinner distances between my lines, and that's really what I want. I want those to be fairly close together. It goes much faster if I don't have to turn my tile. Now my last one, and again I knew which one to, which way to start in the middle and work my way out because of the shape of this. Or I could have started here and gone. We'll just work our way around. There we have it in a square with them alternating back and forth, going first clockwise, then counterclockwise. Now, one last um, Rick's Paradox. And you notice I have a little wobbly line right there. It's really not going to make a difference. Now, this time, we're always going to go in the same direction. So if I start out and I'm going clockwise, I'll do clockwise in every one of my squares. And we're going to see what happens. First one doesn't look much different, different but now I'm also going to do this next one going in that same direction. And again, start down here. And my last one. Again, going in the same direction. Can you see the difference? And there we have it, all going in the same direction, either right to left or left to right, clockwise or counterclockwise. So let's look at our bijou tiles so we can see the difference. This one right here were triangles. This was squares going opposite directions. One square clockwise, one square, square counterclockwise. And this is with them all going in the same direction, which is counterclockwise or clockwise. And we can do a little shading. And I like to shade this one on that rounded line. Just put a little graphite down that line there and then just smudge that line smudge that line and to if you want to really give that rounded look instead of just doing down in here we can just do a, that look round Line here, and there we have Rick's Paradox. Fun tiles, 
Can you see the different ones I've done here? I've just done a variety there. That one, they were all going in opposite directions. That one there also. And that one. Great, exciting tangle today. Hope you enjoy. Leave a comment. I always like to read the comments. I've gotten lots of great comments from people all over the world. And I'm grateful that I'm able to do the videos and teach the art of Zentangle to so many. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. You're going to notice that there's not going to be any music on this um, video. I am eliminating the music. I've had some complaints. So we're going to try it for a while without music. Enjoy, and thanks for watching.